Well, spring practice for the Mississippi College Choctaws is now just about complete. And Coach Norman Joseph joins us now to talk about how the Choctaws have done this spring and uh, hopefully getting ready to improve on the 2010 season for this coming up 2011 campaign. Coach Joe, thanks so much for your time. Uh, tell us a little bit about this spring practice in general. What are your overall feelings so far? I've been really excited about our guys and uh, mainly because of their enthusiasm. Uh, I felt like that when our season ended last fall that there were so many uh, could have been that, uh, that took place and uh, close and, and then for some reason we, we fell short and uh, and so once the season ended and we got into to our winter workouts and uh, had a chance to get with our uh, the players that were returning and some of our new guys that joined us in, in January, then, then we just started afresh with a new beginning, a fresh attitude, uh, attitude and, and uh, fresh ideas uh, going from the very start. And, and I feel like our guys have, have just really bought into it. Uh, they believe in what we're doing. There's a, there's a, uh, a quiet confidence within our team. Uh, but at the same time, they're working extremely hard to to uh, to put last year behind them and uh, looking forward to a very positive year for 2011. Well, let's just kind of go around the team first of all, starting with the quarterback position and his wide receivers. You've got some returning talent there. It's not as deep, I know, probably as you'd like it to be. But you've got some guys who proved themselves on the football field already, and we have. And and Tommy Rear is coming back as our as our quarterback. The, the I guess if there's a negative to the spring is that Tommy got hurt right after spring break. He he um, uh, he went through four days of spring ball uh, before spring break, and then and a non on a non practice day. He was out throwing the ball around and twisted his ankle very badly and has missed the last two weeks and, and then um, is scheduled to, to participate in the last week of practice. So, so that's, that's been a, a little downfall as far as, that, as far as that is concerned with his leadership and, and uh, his uh, experience on the field. Uh, behind him, though, we, we have two freshmen that have done extremely well. Austin Gray and Chris Bunio have been real pleased with their play. Uh, once again, there's a lot of new stuff there. I guess the good thing, though, when Tommy went down, these two guys got all the reps. And, and so what um, uh, may have been uh, just a learning period for them uh, early with Tommy in the lineup, uh, now has become a must for them to learn the system and and really be a, uh, a real factor in what we're doing in practice. So so those two guys have come along very well and and uh, real pleased with their with their uh, uh, their work. Then at the wide receiver, uh, real thin as far as uh, numbers go, but a lot of experience and and uh, those guys. And of course, in spring ball, you don't get to have contact in Division three. So we're out in shorts, we're out in, uh, no helmets. Uh, and it's a lot of passing going on, and, and these guys are getting a lot of running in, uh, a lot of route running, a lot of timing on their routes, and, and I feel like it's been a real plus for those guys as well. So it's, it's really been, uh, from an offensive standpoint, uh, it's, been, it's been good. Uh, of course, not every day has been perfect, and not every segment of practice has been perfect, but it's been a lot of teaching, a lot of positive play is going on, and, and I've been real pleased with them. The running back position was just decimated by injuries last year. Talk about what you've seen in the backfield so far. Well, uh, Steve Knight is back. Uh, here, here's a guy that, that we lost last year after uh, during the second game of the year. Uh, he, would, he had been a 1,300-yard rusher for us the year before in, in 2009, and then, then we lost him offensively uh, in, uh, in 2010. So, so you lose a big chunk of offense when you, when you lose a, a running back of Steve's magnitude. But he's back healthy, doing well, and uh, uh, it looks like he's picking up where he where he left off uh, last season. Uh, uh, Quinn Mobley is uh, is a backup to him, and he's getting a lot of reps. And Quinn played for us quite a bit uh, last year as well. So, uh, real pleased with those two guys and, and the progress they're making and, and their addition and the addition they're adding to our program. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, you've got a new defensive coordinator, and so for these guys. Uh, this is the third defensive coordinator they've worked for in the last three years because That's some right. people have moved on, taken other opportunities. How is that adjustment? You know, anytime there's a coaching change, there, there's there's adjustments to be made. There's new personalities. There's new language. There's new terminology. There's there's but there's also an excitement because all the players feel like this is my chance. Uh, so the, the older guys, guys who felt like they were entrenched in a position, they know they got to come play uh, because there's a new guy making evaluations. Uh, those guys who, 
who have not played as much, they feel like this is their grand opportunity to showcase what they can do. And so I feel like that our defense has really uh, played well during the spring. Uh, they're learning the system, learning the terminology, and, and we have some experience there too. So uh, the, the negative is three coordinators, three terminologies, three um, uh, playbooks, all of that, and um, uh, in three years. But at the but the positive is is that these guys have learned two other systems, and now this is the third. And so the, if you're able to learn one or two uh, new very new systems and do it in a hurry, then when the third one comes about, you can pick it up much quicker. And, and these guys have. Tell us about your defensive coordinator. Uh, Chad Walker uh, comes from from uh, to us from uh, from Rhode Island. He was at Bryant College, Bryant University up in Rhode Island, and uh, has does has a really good package, and uh, it's multiple with what he does. And uh, but he's uh, he's a stickler for the little things. I've been real uh, impressed and real pleased with with coaching those little things. And uh, like uh, I tell our team all the time, if you do enough little things right, then big things are gonna happen. And so many times you keep looking for the big play, big play, hoping for the big play. Well, it's not gonna happen if you're not lining up right, if you're not covering your deep third, if you're not blitzing when you're supposed to, it, those big plays just aren't gonna happen. But if you're consistent with, with your play, and you uh, and you take care of the fundamentals, the techniques that goes along with each position, then you got a chance to be successful. And and Chad is teaching those, and our guys responding in a very positive way. Let's talk about special teams. Last year, the punting game was a point of contention for this football team. And uh, uh, just tell us about who you've seen in practice, and maybe who we can see on the field come the fall. The uh, we we have uh, Brent Moore. Uh, Brent started our season last year for us as a true freshman in the Millsaps game as our punter. Uh, I think he punted twice, maybe three times at the most. Went down in the first quarter uh, with a foot injury or ankle injury, and he was gone for the year. It was very severe, and so we we lost him for the season. Got him for a hard, got him on a hardship. So so he'll have four more seasons left. But he's been handling our punting chores for us this spring. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our uh, our punting. Uh, from a year ago changed because once he went down, then we went to another punter and another punter. I think we went through about seven punters uh, at some point during the year and and um, uh, either in a game or in practice trying to find somebody that could catch it and get it off and not get it blocked and not have too many steps and, and all those type things. But And we interchanged, even had to change our protection, punt protection based on uh, the punting the punters themselves. So there's a lot of changes going on in our team a, a year ago because of injuries and and all but uh, Brand is uh, has handled the punting force this spring and uh, looking to him to, uh, to Continue that uh, and hopefully have a good summer and come back ready to go in August the uh, uh, As far as some of our other special teams positions. We, we have Chris Campbell who is returning He was our long field goal kicker last year as well as our kickoff man uh, we recruited Chris. He was a tough recruiting sale. We got him off our soccer team. <laughs> uh, we had an open date, and so I went to um, uh, uh, Kevin Johns, our soccer coach, asked him if he had anybody that he would uh, allow us to visit with, talk to, and see if we could bring him on our on our team and uh, as a place kicker. And, and he recommended that uh, Chris join us. And so I talked to Chris, he, and he was a mainstay the last half of the season kicked three out of four field goals of 40 yards or more and uh, and was real close on the one that he missed. But uh, he's come in this spring. He's worked hard in the off season and uh, got his leg stronger and he's uh, he's a very accurate kicker, takes his his role very seriously and, and we're real pleased with, uh, uh, with his play this spring. The big question mark is long snapper. So we've got a punter, we've got a place kicker. Uh, but the long snapper situation. When Jared Cummings, we lost Jared last year, and uh, uh, he is um, he was such a, a mainstay for us for four years. Just a real solid player, somebody we, we could count on. We lost, we lose him, and and now we're we're looking for someone to come in and help us in that in that area. So hopefully, uh, someone that we've recruited can come in and be a factor for us and and uh, take over that spot and and be as uh, solid as Jared was a year ago. I know here, especially in the state of Mississippi, we talk about spring football, and I think people have in their minds certain images of what goes on with spring football. And 
you've got a, maybe a big spring game and you got guys sometimes in pads and sometimes not in pads and sometimes there's contact, sometimes there's not. But at the Division three level, things are a little different and that, that gives you some challenges uh, to work for. You're right. Uh, we do not have pads or helmets in uh, spring ball. Uh, and uh, that's mandated by the NCAA. So, so we basically you go out and and you're not supposed to have contact. Unfortunately, uh, players do. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, we've had uh, two concussions this spring, and both of them. It was an offense versus a defensive guy that that resulted in the concussion. It was two defensive guys that ran into each other, and and uh, and and so even though we have tr tried to to uh, mandate or, or uh, recommend and propose a uh, lease wear helmets to protect our players has been voted down uh, the, the times that we've uh, tried to pro uh, get that proposal through. But uh, as it stands, we do a lot of throwing, we do a lot of uh, route running, we, uh, we get to work on our kicking game quite a bit. And uh, and the, and we do have a ball. So um, uh, there was a time in Division Three when you didn't didn't even have a ball, but we do have a ball, and we are able to, to work on some kind of skills and fundamentals uh, with that. And that time was only about six seven years ago. It was, was right? in 2004. Uh, 2005 was the first spring they allowed you to have a ball. Well, maybe the the change will keep moving on. So we hope <laughs> at that pace that would be nice. <laughs> Well, in terms of the schedule next year, we know who's on the conference schedule, and we've got Bellhaven and Millsaps again in the non-conference schedule, and it's good to kind of build up these two rivalries, and uh, that's one road game that's really not a road game uh, as well every year when you play those two teams, and that's right. now, that makes for a really good non-conference slate. Well, you know, it's by design. I tell our team every year that uh, I don't know of anybody else in our conference that plays the non-conference schedule we do. Uh, and so we're we're opening up with with Millsaps. That's been a, a long-standing game, and then uh, and then playing Bellhaven right after them. Uh, I can't think of two tougher uh, or more quality of opponents to play than those two teams. And very well coached. They have great players. As um, uh, they're also cross town rivalries, and and even that, even more so than that, we're we're in the same county. So uh, so there's a, there's a, a real interest in small college football because of those games, and and we're we're proud to be a part of it. Well, coach, we appreciate your time, and uh, good luck the rest of the spring. Look forward to the fall. Thank you so much, Reed. Coach Norman Joseph, head coach of the Mississippi College Choctaws football season begins the first weekend in September as the Millsaps Majors come to Clinton for the Backyard Brawl. I'm Reed Vance.